Okay, students, let's do a quick review of the extended response questions for the Topic 6 test. Uh, you'll find them on the Topic 6 overview, and you'll also find a lot of useful <clears throat> information on the Topic 6 overview for helping you to answer these questions. Uh, the first extended response question, if you weren't here when we went over it in class, uh, explained two causes and two effects of the Great Depression. Notice you've got two and two, which means I'm asking you for a total of four uh, pieces of evidence, which means I'm going to expect you to do two things with them. Because anytime I'm asking you for four things, each one you always have to do two with to give me that nice eight points so that I can then give you a couple extra points for writing incomplete sentences, chewing with your mouth shut and all that stuff. Um, so the first part of this is to explain causes of the Great Depression. And anytime I ask you to explain, it means I want you to identify and explain. You can't uh, explain a cause to me unless you can identify that. And that's where the, the specific evidence comes in. And then the explanation is your analysis of that evidence. Um, so you'll need to identify two causes of the Great Depression. And then for each one of them, explain how it led to the Great Depression. That's a key thing to remember here. Um, so these we can find in lesson one, which is uh, coincidentally enough named causes of the Great Depression. Uh, there's nine listed on the graphic organizer. Um, I put five of them right here. Things like the wealth gap, bank failures, overproduction, stock speculation, uh, consumer debt, and so on and so on and so on. You need to know two of them, so pick two that you can easily explain uh, and remember them for the test. Um, and then also, when you explain it, be sure to tie it to the Great Depression. So it needs to be clear that, you know, the wealth gap led to the Great Depression. How is it leading to the Great Depression? So don't just describe it. Don't just say there was a big uh, uh, gulf between the amount of money that the average workers made and the top 1% or the, the business and corporation owners. Um, you need to explain how is that leading to the Great Depression. Well, that meant that workers didn't have enough money to purchase products, which led to you know the collapse of the economy or something to that effect. So just make sure when you explain it, you are clear as to what it has to do with the Great Depression. Okay. Um, the second part of the extended response question number one is going to be looking at two effects of the Great Depression. Uh, very similar to previously, you need to identify two specific effects um, and also when you explain it, explain how in this case these are effects. So the Great Depression is the cause, that's going to be your given. You need to tie it to the Great Depression as an effect of the Great Depression. Uh, this will not surprisingly be found in lesson two, which is also titled Effects of the Great Depression. Um, and here are some of the things that uh, we came up with in class. High unemployment, increased homelessness, families breaking up, people on the move, uh, farms being lost, suicide rates increase, birth rates drop, and so forth. And just like in the previous part, you need to make sure it's clear how this is an effect of the Great Depression, right? Um, people were on the move. Um, because they lost jobs and had to travel from town to town looking for work or they got kicked off of their farms for not being able to pay their mortgage or because of the dust bowl and so they had to go either look for work on a farm or in the city or whatever else right make sure it is clear this has to do with the Great Depression that this effect is an effect of the depression Extended response number two, um, a little bit of a similar format here, explain two specific ways the New Deal attempted to combat the Great Depression and explain two ways the New Deal expanded uh, the scope and or role of the federal government. I just noticed my typo there, it says two, not the. Um, so we've got another two and two. Um, explain two ways the depression try, or the New Deal tried to fight the depression and explain two ways the New Deal expanded the role of the federal government. These do not have to be the same thing, although you can use the same evidence in that case. Um, so the first part of this explain two ways that the New Deal attempted to combat the Great Depression. Uh, you need to identify two New Deal programs. Um, that's the easiest way to do this. These are the ways that they attempted to combat the Depression. And then explain it. How is it going to try and help uh, during the Depression? 
Uh, Lesson 4 is going to be your source for this. It gets into a lot of those New Deal programs. There are several of them listed there. You also probably researched one in class that you can use to answer this question as well. Uh, you need to identify two. So, you know, there's your alphabet soup, TVA, CCC, WPA, FDIC, SEC, AAA, Social Security, Wagner Act, and so on, so on and so forth. Um, make sure that then you also explain what the program does because, you know, you're saying this is how the New Deal tried to fight the Depression. You need to explain what it does uh, in a way that it shows that it's trying to fight some of the problems of the Depression in some way. Second half of this then is to explain two ways that the New Deal expanded the scope or role of the federal government. Just basically, when we're looking for government expansion, how is it making the government bigger, more involved, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this gets back to uh, the topic six overview. The last question was specifically about this. Um, so explain two specific ways that the government's role expanded and identify specific evidence to support that. So uh, lesson six has a lot of this information in it there as we look at the effects of the New Deal. Um, it helps to regulate the economy. The government uh, takes responsibility for the well-being of its citizens. Uh, the New Deal coalition giving groups a voice in the government, expanding the president's power. Sort of all the stuff that we talked about in the, the overview uh, assignment. Um, when you uh, talk about these things, list specific evidence, either um, a program from the New Deal um, or an action taken by the government in some way, shape, or form. So you want to have something that is evidence that can support the idea that you know it regulates the economy. What is a New Deal program that tries to regulate the economy? Um, it takes responsibility for the well-being of its citizens. What would be a program that you could see as, as a uh, you know, welfare state program like Social Security, for example. Uh, so lessons four you can go to for some of the specific programs. Lesson six also uh, when you look at the effects of the New Deal, it gets into some of the specific actions or specific evidence of, you know, for example, expanding the role of voice for women in there. Um, our first female cabinet member, um, the role of Eleanor Roosevelt, and so forth that aren't necessarily New Deal programs, but are evidence of that uh, particular change we saw with the government. All right, make sure you're prepared for the test, and good luck.